Volvo's Polestar brand continues to expand here in the U.S. market. I'm here on the show floor of the 2024 New York International Auto Show, and this right here is the brand's first ever electric SUV. Meet the 2025 Polestar 3. Let's take a first look. Now, before we start talking about the beautiful new styling of this Polestar 3, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's underneath here because with an electric vehicle, the million dollar question is, does this vehicle have a frunk? And I'm happy to report that as you can see, when you lift this little cover up, the Polestar 3 does, albeit a slightly small one. This has a 1.1 cubic foot frunk, which is perfect, uh, the perfect size to basically put the car's mobile charger in the vehicle. But since we're underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs. Now the Polestar 3 will launch in America in two different variants. The standard Polestar 3, they all use a 111 kilowatt hour battery pack with dual electric motors. The standard output is 489 horsepower and around 521 pound-feet of torque. This model that you're looking at here, however, has the performance package. That ramps things up to 517 horsepower and 671 pound-feet of torque. Polestar says that's good for zero 60 in the mid four and a half second range. The non-performance pack will do it in about five seconds. And in terms of the actual range, Polestar is targeting 315 miles for the base car. Uh, and then for this model here, you should do around 279 miles of actual range. This vehicle can accept up to 250 kilowatts on a DC fast charger. It still runs on the 400 volt architecture, uh, which basically means you should probably go from 10 to 80% in just under 30 minutes. So overall, powertrain specs are pretty class competitive. And I also like the fact that Polestar finally was able to give this vehicle uh, an actual frunk. But closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling of this vehicle. Because I have to say, Polestar has been doing a really great job with a lot of their designs. Their cars tend to turn heads, especially even the Polestar 2, which was their only vehicle for so long. I never had a chance to drive the Polestar 1. But this is important because this is the brand's first SUV, and they're going to continue expanding the Polestar family. You can see the front fascia has the usual design cues. You guys know that Polestar, of course, is owned by Volvo and Geely. Uh, so you can see you have the kind of uh, their interpretation of the Thor's hammer for LED headlights with that LED daytime running light. It has a really interesting look to it, a more premium look with these actual daytime running light clusters there. You have LED turn signals, LED low and high beams. There's the typical smart zone, there's a uh, sensor cluster area here that basically houses the cameras and the radars. There's also a LIDAR, or LIDAR radar up there at the top for the driver assistance tech, the advanced driver assistance tech. And then all these, as you can see here, it has kind of like a variation of the Volvo grill, but it's kind of closed off. And I also love this little kind of air inlet here. This is again, obviously for aerodynamics, it's a complete flow through that goes over the hood that again, allows the air to funnel through to allow for the uh, better aerodynamics, which again is very important for actual range and the performance of the vehicle. Now, uh, looking around the side profile of the Polestar 3, this is actually uh, sharing a platform with the Volvo EX90. If you guys remember our review on the EX90, that is the brand's flagship electric luxury SUV, but the Polestar 2 is a little bit smaller. It's around 191 inches long overall. So it's a good, like, I wanna say, nine inches shorter versus the EX90. Its wheelbase also is like around 118 uh, inches. So the wheels are pushed out far into the corners. You can see all models will come with an air suspension as standard, uh, which is again, kind of showing the hierarchy of the Polestar 3. And then this performance package has these upgraded 22 inch wheels. They are big wheels. You have a 265 by 40 R22 in the front and even fatter 295 at the rear. And then you can see the performance pack adds the kind of gold painted Brembo brake calipers with the massive rotors. These wheels really work well with the lines of the Polestar 3. You can see the wheel arch trim here is unpainted. With that air suspension, it allows you to raise and lower the vehicle, obviously, to get uh, more ground clearance if you prefer. And then down here along the sills, Polestar does typically the badging right here where it tells you the kilowatt hour for the battery pack. 111 is actually among the bigger that I've seen in this particular class. Now you can see the side mirrors. Again, they look interesting because they house more radar sensors and cameras, obviously, for the driver assistance tech Polestar and, of course, Volvo, parent company Volvo, Volvo, uh, pride themselves on having the most safe vehicles in the segment. I also love the way the door handles are. They kind of are flush, but then when the vehicle is unlocked, they'll actually pop out like this to allow you to actually open the car. Uh, the window trim here, I also appreciate that it's black trim or black painted. And you can see the panoramic glass roof is included in this mall. This sadly does not open up to vent air. It is standard in every Polestar 3 and it also has that little Polestar star that projects onto the actual roof itself. Now looking at the rear of the vehicle, I actually think this is probably one of the best looking uh, vehicles that Polestar has done. It's an SUV, but I love how it has kind of like that long roof wagon design to it, even though obviously mo people don't like SUV or wagons here in America. I think Polestar did a fantastic job. It has a nicely integrated rear spoiler. It's got a really nice LED light bar, uh, light blade for the tail light design. It also has more individual uh, LED 
horizontal light or vertical light strips there at the upper portion of the taillights. I love the Polestar badging here. It's very minimalistic. I think that's what Polestar and Volvo really prides themselves on is just doing kind of a minimalistic design. And then down here in the rear diffuser, obviously no exhaust tips. This is an electric vehicle, but it's just very clean. It's modern. It's very upscale. I think that does a really good job for you know, people looking in this particular segment. Now, sadly, I can't open up the there we go. There's the trunk. It has a power lift gate. That little button there that I thought isn't actually a button. You can see, looking at the cargo space, Polestar wasn't ready to quite talk about the cargo figure numbers yet, but you can see this is kind of like a mid-size two-row SUV. I'd, start, I'd probably say there's around 38 cubic feet of storage space back here. You can fold the seats down, obviously, to expand it. Uh, and I'd probably say it has just under 60 cubic feet underneath the floor here. Which, uh, yeah, for some reason, I can't open that for some reason. But I know there's an underfloor storage area here, but it's uh, pretty stuck in there. But um, typically EVs have like a little underfloor storage area here. There's a little bit more storage over here. But overall, if you guys are looking for more cargo space, you may have to look at some competitors. But I do think that uh, it's obviously going to be suffice for most people. So the exterior of the Polestar 3 certainly has a really attractive design to it. But the interior is really where the uh, typical luxury buyer is going to be spending all their time. And this is where Polestar really pulled out all the stops here because this interior feels modern, it feels sophisticated, it feels upscale, and it also has a ton of tech. Now, first of all, this model that I'm sitting in has the, what Polestar is calling the Napa leather, but it also is animal welfare secured, which I guess means it's free of materials that are harmful or detrimental to animals where they source the materials. The seats themselves are beautiful looking. They're also very comfortable and supportive. They're very supple. Uh, they're also heated and ventilated. They also adjust, I believe, in like 16 or 14 different ways. And as you can see, the seat control is interesting where it's like this rectangular cube and you twist it to recline and then you push the actual cube forward and back to actually move it up and down. So it's a different design theme here, but clearly Polestar is going for that for their latest design language. This vehicle's interior also has a lot of the more modern tech features that I really love seeing as well. This is a big upgrade versus the Polestar 2. The center screen you can see here is massive. It measures 14.5 inches. This has obviously Google uh, Android. It's got, it's built off of Android Automotive. It has Google built in. Basically means that there's Google Maps built in. You can also log into your Google account and kind of load up all of your usual settings. Uh, it also has Apple CarPlay as well, although I'm not sure if the CarPlay is a wired connection or it's a wireless connection. It was wired the la in the last Polestar 2 and Volvos that I've tested. And looking over here on the rest of the instrument panel, the driver faces this nine inch inf infotainment or instrument panel here uh, where it gives you all your usual information. You can even put your GPS there, although I suspect that this screen that I'm showing you here is actually just kind of like a display screen. It's not actually the screen itself. The steering wheel itself also is different, quite different versus in the Polestar 2. Different design. I love the aluminum uh, materials around here, the piano black, the flat bottom design. It's again, very minimalistic and clean. These are actual buttons, but they don't show up what they do until you actually uh, turn the vehicle on. Now, in terms of the actual rest of materials, you can see the upper door panel here has this kind of soft touch textile material to it with the stitching. Uh, you have this 25 speaker Bowers and Wilkins stereo system. Polestar says it's bespoke to uh, this particular model. You have more leather stitching along the actual door panel here. The uh, To exit the vehicle, there's this little the release right here that allows you to open it up. And then you can see the mirror, the window controls are weird because I see only two window controls here and then there's a button. I suspect that button's to access the back, the back windows, which is kind of similar to what Volkswagen does with the ID4, which is interesting. Some piano black plastic trim here. So uh, overall, the door panel is definitely bespoke and different. This screen over here also looks very modern and sophisticated. I love the wood paneling that you got here. You also have some actual traditional manual style vents, but they have a nice satisfying click to them when you're starting to adjust the air airflow. You have a wireless phone charging pad here. Uh, you have a nice big volume knob over here. You have two USB charge or USB-C uh, charge ports here. There's a little bit more storage underneath here. And you can see the cup holders have a nice little sturdy lid that can cover up. I don't love the piano black. As you can see, it shows scratches and fingerprints pretty easily. Nice padded center console area. And then if you open this up, this is actually pretty deep. You can see it doesn't appear to be, uh, but it offers a good amount of additional storage that you can kind of cover up. Now, in terms of uh, above me here, you can see the headliner has a woven material. I love the uh, really nice, elegant looking frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, although I don't think Polestar offers a digital camera mirror. And then above me here, you can see it's got that big panoramic glass roof. I also love how there's no kind of partition or di division. It's just one continuous piece of glass. There's the Polestar star logo that actually illuminates right there at night. I'll have to wait until I actually get one back home to test to see what that looks like at night. And then if you want to access the glove box, you have to actually do it through the screen here. The screen itself, I have to say, is pretty similar to the other Polestars that I've tested. There's the Google, you know, built in. Uh, there's a home screen here that allows you to kind of 
go back to the map and then you can put your different widgets here going there. It brings up all your usual applications and sources. You can also kind of swipe down and adjust a couple of settings, go to the car icon here. It allows you to adjust the steering wheel and the side mirrors, which by the way, the steering wheel is actually uh, a power tilt and telescoping wheel. Now I can't get it to turn on right now because the car is off, but this I believe is the first Volvo slash Polestar vehicle to actually have a power tilt telescoping steering column. So that's a nice little upgrade that I think was necessary considering the positioning of Volvo and Polestar, but overall the interior is modern, sophisticated, very minimalistic, but it also is full of really nice high-end materials. But let's hold it, go ahead and hop into the backseat area of the Polestar 3 uh, because the interior of this vehicle First of all, I made a slight mistake earlier. I said the overall length was 190.9. It's actually 192.9, so I was two inches off. But because of the extra long, nearly 118 inch wheelbase, you can see there's a plenty of legroom. I don't have the actual legroom figures uh, just yet for this vehicle, but this is pretty much where I'd have the seat to drive if I was driving this vehicle. And you can see at five foot seven, I can stretch my legs out pretty nicely. There's also a ton of headroom space. The seat, however, feels like it's like mounted very low. So that's really interesting. It's like, I can't really see over the front seat area, which could be a problem for, you know, people who get car sick who need to see in front of you. You can see the door panel materials. They have that same kind of textile plastic or, or soft touch plastic area with the contrasting or with the actual stitching. They have a big speaker here for the Bowers and Wilkins stereo. You also have a metal speaker. Volvo just does a fantastic Bowers and Wilkins audio system. If you guys are an audiophile, which is nice, you can see there's your actual window control to open and close the window. I've never seen it appear more like a switch, like a big, like, toggle switch as opposed to a small window control. Uh, you do have re heated rear seats back here. You have rear seat air vents, two USB-C uh, charging ports, which is nice. You can see there's also a nice flat floor back here, which is good. You have the same beautiful high quality Napa leather back here, which I think is important. The seats themselves, they don't recline, but they do obviously fold down to kind of expand the cargo. And you can see it almost gives you a completely flat floor. There's also a center pass through here. If you guys have skis or longer items to get back. And then if you fold this down, there's also an armrest that folds down. And then you have these two pop out cup holders, which is nice. So overall the backseat area, the Polestar 3, I think this is definitely gonna help sell the vehicle because compared to something like the new Macan EV, which I just saw uh, here on the show floor, this definitely feels like it has more space back here. So as the brand's first ever SUV, obviously the Polestar 3 is a very important model for the Polestar brand. If you guys are looking to get your hands on this vehicle, you're not gonna have to wait too much longer because Volvo or Polestar says that deliveries start sometime later this summer. And the big news here is very recently, Polestar announced that they actually sliced, sliced, slashed the price of this vehicle significantly because originally when this car came out last year, they announced it would begin at around $84,000. Now for 2024, when this goes on sale, the base version, the base version version with like 479 horsepower with dual motor all wheel drive and the plus package that comes standard. This car now starts at $73,900. So that's a $10,000 price reduction, which is significant. If you guys want to add basically the plus package, most of you probably will. It includes a lot of nice extras that this model had that I showed you. That's around five or $6,000 more. So just under $80,000. This performance pack with basically everything Polestar says is going to start at around $83,900. So that's essentially the starting price that they originally announced last year, but now you basically get that price with all the bells and whistles and over 517 horsepower. Uh, so I think Polestar has some nice value. And the other cool thing about the Polestar 3, this will also be the first vehicle built in North America. Now, Polestar says the first models are gonna be built in China at first, but later on, they're gonna actually move production to their plant in South Carolina, which means that eventually this car should qualify for the full 7500 federal tax credit. However, if you lease the car, that kind of allows you to take advantage of the tax credit anyways. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the Polestar 3 for Redline Reviews here at the 2024 New York International Auto Show. I'm Sophie on Bay.